All right, next up, let's move on to dependency injection and figure out what that looks like within the context of a view application. Let's get going. Okay, so have a look at this example I've set up. Here's my home view, and you can see I'm importing this quiz component. Now, it would take way too long to fully implement this for a little example, but I've at least created the basic scaffolding. You can see we're passing a quiz object to our component, and of course, it's dummy data here, but in real life, you would be fetching this from your server. Okay, and if we click through to that, yeah, again, this is the basic scaffolding. A quiz might have a header, a, a section for the question, and you might be doing a v4 to generate those. And then we have a footer. Now, if I switch over to the browser, again, I've set up the, the general scaffolding where you might show the header, you would iterate for all of the questions, and then you might have some links at the bottom. Okay, so here's what I wanna show you. So sometimes you'll run into to awkward situations where you have to pass a prop down many levels deep. We refer to this as uh, prop drilling. So for example, if I go into the quiz footer, we then have another nested component for the footer links. And then right here, you can see we are echoing out the name of the quiz. Okay, so that means this many levels deep, we need access to that quiz object. Now maybe we could pass through the name, but at least in this example, we're expecting the full quiz object. All right, so think about that. We have our, our top level quiz. We then need to pass the quiz object to the footer. And that then needs to pass the quiz object to the footer links. And this is just a tiny example. In real life, you may find yourself drilling down four or five levels deep. And often this can just be, if nothing else, a little annoying, where certain components are accepting a prop for the sole purpose of passing it on to a nested prop. So luckily we do have some options to skirt around this. So in this episode, we'll talk about provide and inject. So it sounds like this quiz prop is pretty important and we'll need to access it any number of levels deep. And by level, again, I'm talking about a nested component. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to import provide from view, and then we're going to provide a key and a value. All right, so now the cool thing is when a component provides a piece of data like we've done here, any of its children or really any of its grandchildren can access that data without requiring that we, we do that prop drilling thing that we're trying to get around uh, in the first place. Okay, so let's see it in action. I'm now gonna go into the footer and then another level deep and let's see if we can grab that value. We can do it by importing inject, so provide and inject. And then I can say, let, uh, what did we call it? Key equals inject key. All right, so notice way up here, we are providing a key of key. And then any of its children can then inject key. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Okay, so now just as an example, let's uh, echo out the value and view it in the browser. So we switch back and sure enough, there it is. We have our value. And just to prove it to you, if we change it to hello there, if we come back, there we go. All right, so granted, this is kind of a silly example, but it's still incredibly cool when you think about it. If we take a look at our component structure, yeah, Quiz is now providing this piece of data to any of its children. And the children is the key thing here. It's not like you, it's not like it's available globally. Its sibling components can't access it, but any children of Quiz can. So that means if I wanna access that key, I don't have to prop drill, I can simply inject it for only the components that require it. Okay, so what else? A couple other things. Uh, what about reactive data? So for example, what if I had, uh, let's, let's think of like a, a name, ref John Doe. Okay, and I'm gonna pass name like so. Okay, so now name is not just a string John Doe, it is a reactive object. So now if we go all the way down to a nested child, let's inject name using the exact same system. Let name equals inject name. And then way up here, we'll spit out that value. Okay, so if we take a look, oh, what do we have here? Uh, ref is not defined. I'm sorry, I thought my editor imported it. There we go. So now, sure enough, we passed John Doe. But what about if we need to change that data? All right, let's talk about some options that are available to you. 
First, real quick at the very top, just so we can see that the data remains in sync, I will also show the name up here. Okay, so now I see John Doe at the top and then John Doe right down here. Okay, well, because name is reactive, if we were to change it, and once again, we'll do a simple set timeout. So I could say, uh, again, after two seconds, let's change the name to a new name, <laughs> whatever that might be. And if I switch back and give it a refresh, we count one, two, and sure enough, we change the name within quiz footer links. And because it's reactive data, of course, that will also be reflected way up here uh, in the parent. Okay, so this is an option. And honestly, I think for a certain size of project, it's totally fine. Uh, you might find at a certain scale, it is frowned upon. And this is because, again, if you imagine a project that, that's quite large, you can sometimes run into situations where uh, reactive data is being changed and you don't know where. And it can be difficult to, to, to figure out, okay, well, well, at some point this is changing, but I, I, I don't know where that's taking place. So this isn't a requirement. You can keep it like this, but, but if that is a concern for you, what you could do is create a rule that the only place you can change the name is in the parent where it's being provided. So if you took that approach, you might provide an object here where you send through the name, or because the key and the value are the same, I can just only provide that. And then maybe we could provide uh, the equivalent of a mutator. And this would be a function that would be responsible for changing the name. So maybe if we call, you know, change name, whatever this might be, and I could then say name.value equals changed, just as a little example. So notice the logic for updating name now exists within the parent. And if we want to trigger that change, we simply pass a, a reference to this function to the child. All right, let's give it a shot. I now go back to quiz footer links and we'll say, how about this? Um, make it a button and we'll say, when you click on me, yeah, I want to call this function here. So if I want to do that, we need to accept it. Name and change name. And then we'll say call change name. So yeah, again, this is kind of a cool approach. Change name is now a function that's being declared all the way within the parent. So the child is just calling that function. All right, let's see if it works. Come back, notice we have John Doe and John Doe down here. If I click on it, sure enough, we update the button and also that's reflected in the parent. So you might find that that's a, a cleaner, more structured uh, way to go about it, especially as you start creeping into larger projects. All right, something to think about at the very least. So finally, to finish this up, we decided that a uh, quiz needs to be available all the way down in this uh, nested child. So let's bring that back. We want the name of the quiz, and I'm just gonna say right here, let quiz equals inject quiz. So I wanna inject quiz from the parent. That means in the parent, I need to provide quiz. So we'll do this, reformat, and then I will say provide quiz like so, actually, I'm sorry, let's say props and then do props.quiz and that should do it. All right, so let's clear this out and view it in the browser. And there we go, all the way down here. Uh, it's difficult to see if I bring it up, we can, uh, we can drill down. So we have our top level, excuse me, we have our top level quiz component. Within it, we have our header and then our question and then our footer at the bottom. And then if we drill down into the footer, there's that final a nested component where we have provided information about the quiz. And yeah, I hope we can agree that is a much cleaner approach versus one after the other, drilling down and passing quiz to this component and then to that child and then to that child and to that child until we get to the very uh, bottom or nested component that requires it.